Recording commencing. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Don. We're, we've got... We're going to talk about games today. Yeah! That's my favorite. This is your jam. I'm this is like a you it. episode. I was I was holding out for it, but yes, this is this is all me, all mine, all the time. That's right. All right, folks, we are here talking about the golden age of board games that we live in. If you don't know what we're talking about, you're gonna find out in a moment. There is now. When did this start, Jeremy? It's it had to be. The golden okay. age started about what about ten years ago. Yeah, I I would say about 10 years ago. Yeah, right after 2010. Yeah. It seemed to be really it, there was there was a really huge movement in poker mm -hmm. from about 2003 up until about 2010, but then there was this shift. There was this paradigm shift where being at home and playing board games and being a nerd was wicked cool. And so, all of the nerds that we knew became celebrities. Yeah. And and I have to say that I hated board games. Um, up until this point, because I mean, I spelled them B O R E D games, <laughs> board games, just sure. couldn't, you know, um, I think one of the big ones at the time, uh, that it was sort of sort, kind of coming around was the game of Thrones board game, which my right. friends play, as you know, it takes them as long as it play takes to play fucking D and D campaign. I mean, it is, yeah, you know, it can take up to six, eight hours for one game for these people. And it's not just sitting around playing a game. There's negotiating. There is yeah. they're trying to make deals and bargains and, and play. It's, it's a lot of politics. It, it is. And, and it's so exhausting. it's very, very uh, appropriate to, you have to kind of like that shit. And I don't exactly. Yeah. And I'm also not a strategy game player. I suck at access as allies and risk and not me, not, it's not a thing that I like. So up until then, count me out. Yeah. So then it, what happened? It's, it's, it's interesting that you find them that way. So, so rather than jumping into the conversation, what happened is uh, there was a, an, an influx. It, like, like I said, there was the online streaming mm -hmm. became possible, became real. And so with the, with the, creation and growth of youtube those who clung to youtube and those who started watching it were already introverted level nerds who were doing their own thing and so when people recognized that they could start doing their own platforms mm -hmm. things started growing from there and one of the the big ones that i point to <clears throat> which were there at the crux of it they weren't the creation of it but they were right at the beginning geek and sundry right. was a television show a television station that happened on youtube and they uh, partnered with Will Wheaton mm -hmm. to create Tabletop. Right. And it was just that. And Will Wheaton got to proclaim himself to the world as this great big game nerd who has been playing board games most of his entire life, plays with friends, has a huge collection of, of role-playing games and, and tabletop games, and wants to share them with you. Yes. And so he started this show called Tabletop on Geek & Sundry to introduce people to games. And it caught on like wildfire. Absolutely. And I've seen a ton of those since. And Will is, um, his work has been fantastic uh, in helping to propagate, I think, the popularity of this. Um, and turns out he's a gamers fan. So he, turns he likes out. our movies. That so worked out nicely. I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it, and you're not wrong. And, and it did. And I think you're... Like, just from there, like, okay, so doing, being Dead Gentleman and Zombie Orpheus, and, and we did the Gamers and the Gamers Darkness Rising and the Gamers Hands of Fate, and we've been in, we've been going to Gen Con as our main jam for years. Yeah. Um, and through that, we get to uh, not only see the games first and talk with the game designers and stuff we actually become friends with the people who actually create all this stuff yeah. which was unreal and really a privilege to to be able to kind of i don't know shoot the shit with these folks who create just amazing things and yeah um and to see the real creativity that um 
that at this point now, like they're just, you know, it's exploding and it's been going on now and it's evidence as you can see in, in our backdrops. But for those playing at home, you can go to any, you know, game shop anymore. And usually you'll find at least one wall floor to ceiling of games they're selling. And there's a yeah. ton of great ones. There's an um, entire line of furniture that is designed around board games. There is right. tables, there are shelves, there is chairs designed mm -hmm. around playing board games now. And they're no longer this weird fringe area. Like there is, there are multiple companies that compete for business for, yeah. for this kind of furniture that's out there because it's yeah. so popular. Absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of great games out there. We're not going to cover all the ones. Uh, I think we, we can hit. There's, there's yeah, thousands it's, it's and impossible. thousands of games. Um, but let's hit some of the great ones. I want to, I want to throw out one that is probably not quite as well known. I'm going to include the new card games as well, because they're basically kind of board games. You know, if we're kind of talk about deck building games or, or quick card games, I think that counts as part of this board game discussion. Um, you know, yeah, I'm not because... talking to, I'm not talking about like poker, uh, substitutes or anything like this these are right game games right and, and like real quick don the way how would you define the experience of playing a board game now that it's no longer b-o-r-e-d yeah what, what would you say is when someone says we're gonna have a game night what do you think they're referring to i think they are so at at a many points in my adult life we those words meant role-playing game Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a game night. Great. Okay, I'll group. I'll make a character. What time do I show up? What system are we playing? You know, that's that's how that conversation went for years for me. Yeah. Then it switched. We're gonna have a game night. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'll show up. Do you want me to bring anything? Um, and now it's I'm going to. So what I what I get out of this is it's almost like an entire role-playing game session, but distilled down into its best parts without the planning and without the hours of character creation. It is still, you can have cooperative team type things. You can have yeah. uh, uh, experiences where you sit down and um, try and noodle each other out as things. Um, and but it's not like chess or or uh i mean it can be but it, sure. it's you know a lot of these um games you know so my favorite games are cooperative uh, okay and so cooperative games are are ones that you are not competing against each other specifically you are you know joining together to defeat the game whatever the game's objective is or that sort of thing yeah. trying to get through it and i love those games and those feel more like the rpg sessions to me um but in a more controlled distilled manner and i think in in a lot of ways some some ways better quality uh time spent yeah because how many i you know if you've been out there tabletop role-playing games uh there is a lot of time that is wasted on yeah. somebody's tantrum or tangent or trying to look something up or, you know, there's, it can get real tedious. And when you get in your forties and fifties and later on, you know, middle age, um, it's a different time in your life where you just yeah. don't have a lot of patience and don't and tolerate for that. that. Anymore. Yeah. Ain't, ain't nobody got time. That's so, totally true. One of the things that also is interesting to me about game night or, hey, let's come up, I'm going to come over and let's play a game is I think it's one of the things that I love about your passion about this is we have different, not just genre of like, what is the setting and that's, I mean, that's anything, anything goes there. Sure. But we have style not just styles of play because that's obvious but board games are built around time played 
Yeah, like they're built around how long does mm-hmm. this typically take to play? And they're, those categorize certain specific types of board games. Yeah. You know, and so there's there's a there's one subgenre as you know called you know it's kind of casual gaming. Casual gaming, yep. Not a lot of you know brain power really needed to to dive into that. Um, usually, usually less than an hour for those, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, usually less than an hour. Usually, uh, really simple to learn. Yep. Um, and uh i mean and the, and then there's the the really like the mini ones where it's 10 20 minutes a game yeah you know and so i i want to release you and talking about some of your favorite things about that but to me the idea that i can i can pick what i'm going to play and how long that's how long of time that is going to take up for me you know i've got dead of winter and hmm. we've played a six and a half hour game of Dead of Winter. Yep. We've also played an hour game of Dead yes. of Winter. It, it's a it's one of those games that can fluctuate and, and you can choose what style you want to play with that. Um, Marvel Legendary, which I'll get to later, which is my favorite game. That can be pretty damn quick or it, it also can take <laughs> hours, you know. <laughs> Just do it right. Just yeah. how you want to do it. Um, and then we'll get into uh, uh, the legendary. Or not, yeah, no, legacy. We'll legacy, legacy games. games. Yeah. Um, so, but let's talk about the casual games. And, and like, I know your big jam right now, or and has been for a while, is those quick or really also portable games. Yeah, yeah, and you're right on with that. One of my greatest dreams that I have one of these days is to be able to set up and play a role playing game, and I and I really didn't mean RPG uh, without having to do all of the prep. Still being able to create characters and have fun, but not have to literally go through the multi hours of process because that's a burnout for a lot of people just to get into it. And just the idea of sitting down and playing a game is part of what makes it really fun for me. There doesn't have to be planning. You can just come over, bring your bag of snacks, and, and we're ready to go, and we can do it. Even getting through the instructions is is different. And you're not wrong. There are so many games out there that start at three hours long or, or, or three and a half hours long, and they work their way up, and they're super heavy. They've got lots of mechanics and lots of rules, and they can be a blast. Um, I'm really enjoying the game Nemesis right now, which is basically mm-hmm. what the aliens board game always wanted to be. And it's fantastic. You've got these characters, you have to be the ship, you have to survive on it. You have to, to fight the monsters as well as survive each other and going through it. It's incredible. And it's really, really great at, about what it does. You almost always lose. And it takes you about three and a half hours to, to get through losing the game. So let's talk about, uh, I want to pause you there for one thing, because that is a thing now where losing is fun. They've, yes. they've actually made it so that games can be fun to lose and That's to true. want to play it again and be okay with losing again. So continue. I just wanted to point that out. That that's kind of a big deal. That's a big deal, and, and I, I think we should talk about that when we get to legacy games because yeah. that's that's a really great example of of how losing really can work out for you, uh, it, or you don't mind it as much. Certainly, by any means. Um, when you talked about uh, the mini games, a, a, another term for those is a filler game. A filler it's the game, game in between games. Ah, that's so that's funny. the idea. It fills the space in between the, the two other games that you play. And that you know, tends to be a collection of mine. One thing that I love about that entire concept is that the it's the assumption that you always want to be playing a game. Yes. There is, there is <laughs> not just like, it's just not just filler games, but there are games that are specifically designed that you could whip out while standing in line. Yes, specifically. Yeah. And, and that's, that's absolutely part of the idea. And, and the, you know, I don't like to use the word obsessed, but this is one of those things that you can point to me and go, you do this a lot. <laughs> and then one of the things I do is just like to play games. And so in, 
and this has happened since I was a very small child, ever since I first found out about these cassette games that looks like a cassette tape, but you whip out a board, if it unfolds, folds out, and then the cassette dials are actually dice. You spin what? them with a little flicker. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'll show it to you sometime. But they were like my first like travel games, like board games can literally go anywhere. And this was mm. the first time I experienced that because these would fit in my pockets. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I can always play a game. Because I had this terrible fear of boredom, like like unnecessary fear of like huh. I'm gonna be bored somewhere, uh, and that was that was something that I kind of had anxiety about as an elementary school kid. Hmm. So my pockets were filled, like I would constantly cram my pockets full of games or toys to help me from to prevent me from being bored at any time. Hmm. And that you know whether I'd like to admit it or not, that has continued on into my adulthood because now I carry a bag of games with me everywhere. And they are often a bunch of filler games because I know out of experience that a filler game is something that's easy to teach. It's easy to get one to someone to commit to and fun to play. So if I can find those three things, I can usually find a player almost anywhere who is okay to give up 20 minutes of their time. Mm -hmm. How I see it, give up 20 minutes of their time, right? But, but sitting down to play a game, they don't feel like it's that long commitment. And then and they, I found these tiny epic games that I thought oh. were going to be filler games that turns out to be exceptionally oh, epic and long as hell. <laughs> so they are, they live up to their name. They are tiny and they are epic. And yeah. you might think it, as you're sort of looking at uh, games with similar titles or games by the same company that they would have basically the same mechanic. These don't. These Not are entirely different games. They are what uh, the size of a um, of they're, a they're cigar like box. a six by yeah cigar box or yeah, even they're, smaller. They're like a five by eight by two inch box. Yeah, like a five. Okay, yeah, so I would. Yeah, okay. So uh, I was thinking of like those larger note cards, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, like a, a stack bit, of the. No yeah yeah so but the point is is like you open that up and then playing the game fills an entire table yes and can be very intricate in learning how to play there's a lot of things to learn so a lot of things. contained in a tiny little package but you can have a pretty epic game literally i i mean i just i do love that about that um it is unfortunate because they do sort of have that. Um, they give that impression that this is like a quick to learn, right? Easy to set up kind of thing, and it's really not. And they even use that phrase a couple of times, like 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 you learn it in five minutes and then play it in two hours. And and you're right, like like they're they're very much what I consider to be a gateway game. Where mm. like, oh, this, I'm a casual gamer. This is a casual looking game. Look how bright the colors are. It says you can learn it in five minutes. This is perfect. <clears throat> then you go through it and go, oh, wow. There is, there's actually like nine mechanics in here. And I got to pay attention to those things. Yeah. Like the Tiny Epic Zombies is a great example. You're fighting oh, yeah. zombies. Sure. But you also have to complete the objective of the game. Well, yeah. which one? Oh, all of them. There are three yeah. objectives. You have to do all of those and survive. What, what if one of us dies? Oh, you lose. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what if we don't do one of the objectives? Well, you lose. <laughs> it's just, it's like, wait a minute. I suddenly went from this, like, I got to go kill zombies to now I have to survive and get to a helicopter and rescue the child. What yeah. the hell? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, and either that's amazing or it sucks. I mean, yeah. it just depends on what you want out of a game. Um, so yeah i mean i that's the thing is that there's just there's so much gamut so my i guess my the take the way that i want listeners to get is if there's if there's anything you could possibly think of that you would like there's there's probably a game out there for you there's a board game that. out there for that and it does not have to be long and tedious in the process mm -hmm. you can find and, all sorts of things in and you'll be surprised at the types of games that you end up absolutely loving so remember when i said that i hated axes and allies and risk and and yeah, game of thrones games. like strategy games and stuff like that yeah and i'm not a fan myself because again i i don't really i i, I just mentioned that i like nemesis right that's a that's a three-hour game 
I, I typically, I really am a fan of casual games. I really mm. like the ones that are not necessarily just party games. Like they, they have some really good conversation around them, but I like the ones that are like actual like conversation level. Let's sit down and play this game for about an hour to an hour and a half. Cause I don't yeah. want to lose attention for people. Yeah. I'm going to pause cause you're dropping in and out there. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I keep seeing my microphone like switching out. Let me, let me do the cable here. It seems like it's having a hard time. I wish the recording told us how long we've been recording. That'd be nice. Right. But let's, you know what your, what your cord length is like. How's that? We're good. Yeah, just a second. I got to replace this cable. It's a bummer. I'm going to say we've been talking for 15, 20 minutes. Mm, I think, yeah, at least 20 minutes. I think 20, 25 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> you putting a mark? Yeah. Marking? Nice. Uh, okay. Hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> So these the strategy games that uh, that I haven't really liked in the past, well, there 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 became a type of strategy game that is super strategic that I absolutely love, and that ends up being the pandemic and the legacy games. Yeah. Which you've got right over your shoulder, by the way. If you look, if you I look do. over your right shoulder. I do. And guess what? Pandemic Legacy Season 3 is Season 0. And it arrives tomorrow. What? Yeah! Okay, Let's... so, Jeremy, what the hell is Pandemic Legacy Season 1 and, and so on? Okay, so without being fully spoilery about it, Pandemic is an original board game where there is a actual series of pandemics that are trying to conquer the globe. And you play as different characters trying to find cures and stop the pandemic from spreading. It has got way more ways to lose than it has to win, and it's an exceptionally difficult game. A few years ago, I don't know, seven years ago? No, I think it was six, six years ago. I think it's 2015. Uh, Pandemic came out with a game called Legacy. And the Pandemic Legacy game is it, it's the same game. It's the game of Pandemic. But it's supposed to be played a certain finite number of times. You can play it up to two times every month. So there could be up to 24 different times you play the same game. But... Because it's a legacy game, every time you end one of your rounds of play, something permanently changes in the game. Yeah. You either alter the map or you change and add different cards or add challenges or, you know, perhaps benefits into the game. But from that point on, the game plays the new way. So let and me so uh, the drop game some... you start with and the game you end with can be two very different places. Oh, yeah. And no two games are going to be the same. Correct. Like if your friends are playing this same exact packaging and everything, they're going to come out. They're they're going to end their sessions differently than you will end yours. Yeah. And their board will look different than your board. And what I wanted to say is um, that you said that you can play up to two times a month. Well, that's not literally true. Right. What you really mean is you have 24 times you could possibly play this game. Um, you have 24, uh, essentially potential rounds or potential games of this, yeah. of, of this season or whatever you want to call it. And each time you are putting stickers on the board, you are, uh, changing the layout. Um, you are applying different things and different new mechanics. You are tearing up actual cards you're that tearing is... them up and destroying them, and they're out of the game now. Do you remember how hard it was for us? Oh. The very first time we played, and it said, destroy this card. And we're like, what does that mean? And the rules said, D tear it in half. And we're like, what? N no. No. It's a card of the game. Like, we would not get into it at it all. It was so hard. And then, like, six months in, we were... <laughs> 
we were just shredding them without even blinking. We're like, get rid of that one. Yep, done. This one, yeah. yep, done. <laughs> it Recycle. So, it's so easy to just kind of fall into like, never seeing that again. Fuck off. Yeah. Hilarious. So, but talk about a game where once again, you choose a character. Um, that character has particular abilities. Those abilities can be added or taken away or new things, you know, happen or that character can die. Oh, man. Um, but that, that game is an opportunity to also be a role playing game. Which yeah. we did. We sure did. You know, and so, and the other thing about this game is that you can have a maximum of four players. You really want a fifth player, but it doesn't <laughs> let you. You don't get a fifth player. That is so true. You want one, but oh my God, no way. So you have to do, make do with four. You really need five. They're making you do with four. They did that on purpose. Yeah. And it is it is one of those like you want a a team of players that can gel well uh and and play and and get into kind of a zone of being able to anticipate and work with each other's strategies and it, we're all thinking big picture and small picture and um, we're, and that's the lovely thing about this game is that you can strategize. You can, before you make your turn, you can plan the fourth person in front of you's turn. Yeah. So that you can plan out what could happen. Now there's, as we know, shit will happen that blows that entire thing up. And you can't do that anymore. Apart. But, but like, that's been, that's been a couple of times that we've really like, taking the strategy level and put that into the game where we decided like, okay, we're going to stop playing for 20 minutes to talk about what we're going to do when we play so that if everything goes to plan, this is going to work out. Yeah. And then we watch the world fight back. Yeah. And then like our, our plans blow up, but that or 20 minutes never felt wasted. Happen. Right. It's... Sometimes it worked out. And, and I, I, again, um, the twists and turns failing was as rewarding as winning and the winnings were high. The yeah. failings were a big blow, but what the drama was incredible and just the experience of play was super high. Yeah. I, I don't know. I totally agree. I don't know. Once again, if, if that just requires a special group of four players that can just do that together really well, or, you know, uh, I mean, cause the other thing is if you want to play this, it, it's really like, I can't imagine playing an entire season of pandemic legacy with not the four same players every session. Oh yeah. That sounds impossible. Or, or because, you it, have to have you know, people changing buying it up in. Or, well, and you have to know what happened. Have to know what happens and, and be a part what, of that. Yeah. What the strategy was and how things are evolving. And like, I mean, you got to think of this as like the walking dead or the, you know, some sort of like ongoing television show of these characters that are coming together and, you know, um, dying or being reintroduced or, changing or <laughs> oh my god i i couldn't even imagine if the character that i was building died in someone else's hands if if they were playing yes. my game with you oh like, my I, god i would have been absolutely devastated i would have been pissed off about that it's the same exact feeling is if if you know you show up to somebody else's role-playing game and you're playing their character because they couldn't make it and you die <laughs> yeah that's that's what that would be like you know yeah you yeah, get I, invested in these characters you really do and and the game allows for that and, and mm -hmm. like you said it's a commitment i mean maybe it's not an entire year maybe you actually do it all in a couple couple of months excuse me but it's it's definitely something that you commit to you really want to see it through to the end yeah or to the next end right like we you and i have played uh pandemic legacy one and two 
Mm-hmm. And the first one took us almost a year. Yeah. To get through. We really we really did spend time just because we live so damn far apart. Yeah. But we we still held on to that and committed that. And then the, the second one we did a little bit faster. Um I will I will let you know I was playing Pandemic 1 twice. I was playing season one with another group here in Portland while I was also playing it with you back and forth. Oh, crazy. And uh, they turned into very, very different games. Oh, Just like you said, they're, they're significantly different. Yeah. But uh, in, in the same way, like I didn't play that with anybody else other than those other two people mm. and, and other than, than you two. Like I, we were all committed into that. Did you find one spoiling the other? No, I was expecting to. Truly, I really was. But the game was so drastically different hmm. because of the decisions that we made. And I would not make decisions based on previous knowledge of the other game. Yeah, I wouldn't. Be, sure. I wouldn't say this happens here, so we're going to have to do it this way. I would because that's not fair to anyone else in, in the experience in the game. Let, let's. That's we're right. all going to do this to the experience. So I did what made sense for the game. I did what made sense for the character. I played two exceptionally different characters, mm-hmm. way different in, in the roles, and we did what what it would make sense to do. And so when the reveals happened, they happened. And they were surprising both times mm. because it, it it came up in a completely different yeah. way to do it, which was really amazing game design so for those of you that uh, haven't done this and are kind of starting to put this together when you're done with this can you still play the game you can still play the basic pandemic game but i've got to tell you i wouldn't want to yeah i wouldn't either i think i would shelve it or i would take the game board and frame it um and have everybody sign it um with key with all the different characters or something uh it's a it's a momentous occasion and then you go out and buy the damn thing again (laughs) and play it again with either the same group or somebody else to have a different experience change things up and and uh that's kind of the sneaky thing about this that 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 is so brilliant in the game design is that they it it literally makes you buy the game again it's it's a one-time use basically yeah yeah. it's a one-time use yeah which i'm fine with right and that's that's the thing you don't feel bad about that at all it's you get so much gameplay out of it so much gameplay it's such an experience and i gotta be honest I, i own Don, I own like 220 games. I have a lot of games, and I don't like to say that I have not played all of them, but I haven't. I have probably 15 games that are still in shrink, like like mm-hmm. they've never been taken off of my shelf at all. I, they're gonna. I'm, I'm really excited yeah. that I have them. I don't want to get rid of them by any means. But even with the games that I have played, even my favorites that I try to get, get out to the table so many times, I don't think I've got any other game that I've played 20 times mm. other than Pandemic. Yeah, the, the pandemic well, legacy. I, oh, right. That's yeah, the one yeah. I'd, I've played so much of, and so and so. Like I said, really being invested in that. In every other game I have, eh, we're hitting yeah. a dozen, right? Fifteen, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, I, it's phenomenal. I feel you. So you bring an interesting thing up. You own two hundred and thirty some games. Oh, yeah, I do. You mentioned fifteen of those are still in wrappers. Yes. Beyond that fifteen. How many other games that you own have you never played? Okay, so never played like over the top terms. Um I probably still have an, an additional five games I've never played. At okay. least haven't played my copy of them. Right. Hang on one second. Sure. We're going to take a break. I need to take care of a dark barking dog. I'll be right back. All right. Thank you.
All right. So <clears throat> pandemic is great. Uh, what you just said about um, basically a little less than 10% of the games you haven't played. Yeah. That's not terrible, Jeremy. That's a pretty great collection that you have. Honestly, <laughs> like as far as like, uh, you know, you're going to say 230 games plus or whatever. And somebody's going, Jesus Christ. Right. That is a lot of games. But the fact that you've played, all, you know, the vast majority of them, it says a lot as you as a game collector. I mean, thank you. I appreciate that. But in but to me, like it doesn't make sense to have a toy stuck in its package or to have a game not really not waiting to be played. Like that's that's not what they're designed for. They may have some great artwork, but they're designed to be played. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. now, I just it just arrived in the mail yesterday. I've got uh, Shovel Knight Dueling Dungeons 3D edition sitting out on on my uh, table. It is it is a full size game box that is about triple thick. It's about eight inches tall. Wow. And I'm so excited. Like, like I'm, I'm stupid excited to try it. Because I knew the board game was coming, I bought the video game to, to play Shovel Knight and get into it, which has been Whoa. a hoot, by the way. But I, I bought the board game first because I was really excited about the idea of having a side-scrolling board game. That is awesome. It seems wow. hilarious to me. But but like it's it's to that, right? It's yeah. Games should be played. Yeah. And and I wish, I really wish I could honor my collection and play all of them more yeah but, but like you said mid 40s we don't have time for that anymore i i've got i've got a lot of other damn priorities like podcasting <laughs> that takes up important time but it does mean that when i do play games i really cherish that time yeah and well really and like you said i mean every single game is a particular time commitment you know so it's a yeah. little bit different in the way you know some people will handle their collections game collection is kind of an ordeal um and and you right the to... shelfies behind us i i would love to say this is actually my shelfie that's not true yeah i, I stole here. this picture from somebody else this is this is not my collection but uh, it could be you know yeah um i don't have a game cabinet that is this full i probably own less than 50 games probably less than 30 games um, because the games that I really love, I love, and I don't really branch yeah. out that much. I'm not, I don't really branch out. Um, there are a few games that I just keep coming back to, uh, you know, the captain is dead. You, you early were, we're talking about a game where, you know, shit happens and aliens are coming and all that stuff. And yeah, the captain is dead is one of my favorite games that. And again, like that's a game where if you don't have the right characters, if you don't have the right team, um, it's not going to go well for you. <laughs> Arguably, even if you don't have the right players who are in the mood for the game, it's not going to go right for you. Yeah, yeah because, that's because true. Even, even the way the player plays the game really makes a difference on that one. That's, it does. That's And it doesn't take a long time commitment, but it does take investment. It does. It does. So The Captain is Dead is a Star Trek clone type idea. If, you know, Captain Kirk or Jean-Luc Picard in the first before you even start playing is killed immediately, then what happens? You mean like He-Man? Yeah. First episode like dead? Jesus. Spoilers. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Camp Grizzly is a crazy fun horror game that... Oh, you know, there's a few of them out there, but that one I do kind of like coming back to. It's also one that I find that I just, I still need to be in the right mood to sit down for, but I'm always glad it's there. I don't particularly own it. I don't actually have it. I would yeah. love to have it, but I don't I have do. it. Yeah. Which is yeah. great. If you have it, I basically have it. So that's awesome. Exactly. It, right. And the, really, what a great way to look at it. Cause yeah, yeah, you basically have it cause I have it. Did you give it to me? I think that was a birthday gift from you. That sounds right. Yeah, I think I have. That sounds like yeah. a thing I would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so my jam, my big game, as you know, is Marvel Legendary. And this is a board game because it has a board, but basically that's it. You know, um, it's mostly a card game. It's a deck building game. 
So this is a mechanic where you are trying to make you the deck that of cards that you have better um, and more powerful so that you can take on the villains and stuff. I probably have close to a thousand dollars if not more in this game yeah um nice with all the expansions i bought these sort of aluminum uh padded cases you know that kind of look like shield you know cases that are you know you open it up and it's foam and you know you have the artifact inside in fact i i just got stencils So on the outside of one, so I have two cases and on the outside of one, I'm going to do shield, the shield logo. And on the other one, I'm going to do Hydra. Ah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. So, and that is a game. So one of the things that I look for in a particular game, if I'm going to buy a game or invest a game is I want the replay value to be through the roof. Sure. And, that's kind of where I'm at with like movies I would own. Like I want movies that I will watch again and watch again probably a few times. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and Marvel legendary is a different goddamn game every single time you play it. And (laughs) that's the thing that I love about that game. And it, it, it can be as long as you want or as short as you want. It just depends on how you want to build the setup of the game now the setup of the game is like some other games it's a it's a bit of an investment there's a time and you really have to have somebody who is willing to set up the game and then take it down the setup and takedown is a is a lot it's yeah. you know it's building the decks it's shuffling it's then once we, and then when you put them away you have to resort out the different mini decks to put them back in their right spot you know there's, sure. there's a ton but and i imagine the more cards you have the, the harder it gets because you just have more and more things to build out or put away well not necessarily because you still have to only you can still only play with the same amount of certain cards you okay. just have more to keep track of um sure. and and to organize them so um i like i say i've probably with all the the uh expansions and um card sleeves and things like that that i've uh you know i'm probably at least easily a thousand into it um you are probably similar with red dragon in oh I man imagine. i sure am yeah i don't even want to talk about the money that i put in on that but if, if you take the card sleeves and the metal coins and just the base games alone oh, yeah we're looking at 650 dollars. yeah for then sure. you talk about the expansions that i buy every time they come out on kickstarter mm-hmm. and the accessories that come out with those every time they come out on kickstarter and uh it's just i just keep looking at hundreds and hundreds of dollars every time but the thing is about that is that it proves the game so much it does and playing that game is so much better every single time we play it and it is different every single time we play it and so i love red dragon in for that and i love that i don't have to spend a goddamn dime on it because <laughs> you've got that covered <laughs> the, the shared collection you, yes what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine too that's right that's right so but <laughs> I will tell you, I was shocked, but not that shocked to find out that it's been a while since I've bought an expansion um, for Marvel Legendary. And yeah. there are several out that I do not have. I'm excited by that because that means there's more to build. Um, right. It's fun. But there is uh, sh- the Shield expansion. What? Um, yeah. Where they have new shield officers <gasps> that's what i was hoping you were gonna say oh it's so, not all just maria hill yeah so in in the game in marvel legendary the shield officer is the same card it's just a card that you can buy it's an option that you can have it just gives you to recruit that's it costs three to buy gives you to recruit and recruit is what you use to buy other cards yeah um well what they did with like, uh, not just hench, not henchmen, um, sidekicks mm-hmm. and bystanders. So bystanders didn't really used to give you anything, right? They were just then, they were just point value. 
yeah, and then they started introducing um, bystanders that actually did something. And they weren't huge, but it was useful. Yeah. Same thing with sidekicks. Sidekicks would just give you two extra cards, which is awesome in and of itself. And then you have to put the card back. But then they started making variants of that. And like, what else can you do about the same power level of what that does? Now we're going to do shield officers, which no one buys unless they have to. Unless they have to, right? <laughs> it's, it's always a throwaway. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. There is one um, uh, Revelations. I'm, I'm trying to cue this up. I don't know what this is. Oh, so Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and War Machine have finally emerged from the shadows. But the Avengers are tested as never before when Dark Revelation forced them to question everything they know. Nice. Oh, Dark so... Revelations expansion. That's rad. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, they have, I know that they have one that's kind of like uh, the House of, the Realm of Kings, which is the, it's the Inhumans. Okay. Um, there's Dimensions, which looks like it's kind of a Spider-Verse um, cross-dimension thing. The New Sweet. Mutants. Into the Cosmos is one I'm, I'm actually really interested in. You get Adam Warlock and... Um, what was the other one? Um, Quasar. Adam Warlock and Quasar and other really super epic characters. Um, super Doctor cool. Strange and the Shadows of Nightmare. What? That's... <laughs> if you say Doctor Strange, I am in. That's yeah. a consistent heroes of asgard so anyway there's there's a ton of expansions i'm excited that there's more that i don't own and that i will at some point um and uh and yeah gonna need so, to get a third case i think find, i might find a new stencil Shit. <laughs> it's a good thing there are you know other factions <laughs> right for sure but I, I think you actually brought up something that I, I really love to bring up it, is that because we enjoy playing games together so much, we never have to worry about collecting the same things, getting the mm -hmm. same games. I know that the games that I'm really interested in about the ones I'm into that you will definitely try out and play with me are very likely not going to be the ones that you'll be like, I totally need to own this. But right. if you do, you will, right? You'll, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll get the game because you're like, Hey, we're going to play this a lot without you. Yeah. Which, which is some great dungeon. Games. One deck dungeon. Great example. Like what a fantastic game. That's, that's a quick setup, actual dungeon delve in, in a very, very small box that you don't have to worry about doing much with. That you can and play with fun. anybody. And you, you can play it with two players, uh, which yeah. is rare. You, I mean, that's such a wonderful thing. Um, Fires of Adelon, which is <laughs> the the golden child. It is my favorite, you know, it's my favorite, like, surprise game. I don't know what you call it. Easter egg, not Easter egg, but um, sleeper hit. It's, it's a for sleeper me, hit for it's, sure. First off. You can't get it anywhere. That's the thing that's kind of a bummer yeah. because we're talking about it, but it's not available hardly anywhere. I mean, good. Um, you can look on Board Game Geek. That's about the best bet you'll get is, is secondhand. Yeah. But yeah, it made it through its Kickstarter run, and that was it. That's all yeah. they did. That's and, all they made. Oh my god, is it a fun game? It, so the idea is, it's kind of a Super Nintendo discovery, almost like a Legend of Zelda dungeon reveal as you yeah. go and you have to do things and it's just it's just really really fun um, it's it's a great mechanic and and you'll probably guess if don's really excited about the game it's going to be a cooperative game yeah and so <laughs> this is another one of those that is a, right. it's a cooperative game as, as a team play and uh and you can lose pretty significantly or oh, if man. you win it's almost always by the skin of your teeth it is yeah. right to the edge every yeah. time so it's super exciting to play and you can feel like you're screwed mm. and then still turn it around. Yeah. Um, the other game that was introduced to me at a Gen Con by one of my great game designer friends, Cam Banks. Um, he was uh, 
working with the company that created this um and it's called lost in Relia. and it's you know cthulian it's in this little tin with tarot sized cards and this gorgeous artwork yeah it's amazing um and it's just a real simple almost like a rummy type um yeah, and kind of, kind of, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you're co collecting sets and building tricks in yeah, that same way and stuff. But the but way you play is way different. It's way different, and all you have to do is read the cards. It tells you exactly yeah. what you need to do. So it's so super simple, and they just give you a little coin that shows you like which direction you're going. Because sometimes you'll kind of like, I don't know, face ten or Uno. Like you can switch the direction, not face yeah. ten. I don't know what I'm talking about there, but you can. <laughs> switch the direction of of play um but that's a game that i would never have known to pick up but it's a game i introduce anybody to yeah like i sit down and you know basic concept of the game is there will be no winner uh <laughs> in this game no one's yeah. gonna win there nope. will no one will win this game there will be one loser <laughs> <laughs> and and the concept is that you are lost in this Cthulian madness scape and uh and you're trying to escape this realm you're lost in Rillian and uh it is it is fantastic it's just and it doesn't take long to play and it's just really fun it's a it's a great one and I agree with you like and that that absolutely uh scratches my itch too it's that casual style game it's that mm -hmm. one that's been around it uh, that you can get into uh pretty quickly like you said it takes five minutes to learn and then it takes maybe a half hour to play even with all four players yeah it's it's super fun it's 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 the right the right length for that filler game that that intro level or the warming yourself up for it yeah you've got one over your shoulder that i absolutely love to play as well it never gets to my table enough and it's terror in Meeple city over here, oh. right there. Uh, in, I have the original version of it called Rampage, but oh. it is it is a great game that has about I don't know three hundred meeples <laughs> involved. There's just a wow. bunch of little teeny tiny people that you build in little borders on this city map. So there's this like rubble city. You put the people on the borders, and then you put uh, roofs or floors on top of their heads, and you keep stacking. So you build this four or five uh, stacked tower of buildings all over the place with these meeples in between. Then you have a giant dragon meeple, your your kaiju, that has to rampage through the city and like explode the buildings and <laughs> eats the meeples. That's great. It is super fun, and it's worth every minute of setup for that game. Oh, wow. That's great. Oh, that's a, that's really fun. Okay, it, well, crazy yeah. ideas, right? Like different mechanics, no strategy on that one at all. That that one's more of a uh, an actual like physical play game yeah. for that one. That's great. Yeah, I, I was just thinking of uh, when you were starting to explain it. I was thinking of uh, Boss Monster. Yeah, uh, which is kind of, but uh, honestly, Boss Monster I thought would be a little bit more like King of Tokyo. Oh, sure. Um, but I really like that boss monster is no, this is really more of that again, that eight bit um, experience that, yeah. you know, back, you know, you are your, you are the boss of that level and you are building out your dungeon, building the dungeon that kills the heroes to go through their eight bit yeah, world. Yep. That's, that's it. fun. But King, I mean, speaking of rampage, I mean, just King of Tokyo is rampage, the board game. <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. From the old, you know, the, 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 the monkey fighting the King and, Kong fighting yeah. the lizard guy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that one's super fun. Again, it has that weird gameplay value where you have the the Yahtzee level dice uh, mm -hmm. playing back and forth on the game board, and that very few decisions that can be made by upgrading your powers, or maybe I back out and retreat this time to heal before I try to go in and take all the victory points again. Yeah. And that's a fun one. That's another one that's got plenty of expansions that keeps the game really interesting. For sure. I think the other other one that I kind of want to mention before we uh, sort of end this 
fiasco today is um uh was it arkham horror i think is what i'm thinking of Woo! talk about a heavy game i'm not talking about the board game though i'm talking about the card game so arkham horror horror yeah it is a two-player game whoa what yeah um the the card game and it's just it's really really interesting and it's it's just like if you want something for you and your wife to sit down and play and kind of get through um it is really fun and it's got a a lot of expansions and a storyline that carries over into you know different seasons um and uh highly recommend it yeah one to two players you can play it solo okay um but no more than two players that's really cool how long does it take then um you know it can be one to two hours okay nice but not the not the the immense no session that the normal arkham horror board game is no that so yeah arkham for so there is the board game version arkham horror and um Arkham uh, Eldritch Horror. Eldritch Horror, yeah. Which is the massive expansion upon that, which can take six to eight hours. My you know. first time playing Eldritch Horror was at 10 p.m. at night. And when oh, it got to Jesus. 4 a.m., I was like, I hate this game and I hate you people. Why am I here? Yeah. I was so done. I was so tired. Yeah. That was an experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, well, we could talk about this all night, but I mean... There is one thing I actually do want to bring up because you just mentioned something that I find really fascinating because it's something I'm really getting into right now. Yeah. Single player games. Mm. So Good there point. is a there's an entire set of games now that have uh, originally been developed that have gotten single player, especially in the pandemic uh, world where people mm. have been on lockdown and they can't see other people to play with. Yeah, there's the actual whole, pandemic, not the board game. Not pandemic. the board game pandemic. Fun <laughs> fact, though. The board game pandemic gained the most popularity ever beat during the lockdown of the of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people played it for that, which was, I found fascinating. Like, I was always like, whoa, that's too soon. But everyone else seemed to be really into it. Yeah. Um, but single player games, single player board games, not just for single player rules that are now part of several different games that are out there. But I have a game that I just got in the mail a week ago. Yay. Called Relics of Rajavahara. And it is designed to be a puzzle game for one player. Huh. It, I, I can't add other players to this game. I spent, I've spent a full $40 on this, but it is a one player game. And it is one of several games that I've started seeing out there where it is a game just designed for single players, really? whether it be a role playing game for one players or different levels of board games and legacy games, even for one player. That is uh, a growing genre right now that's out there so you don't even need to have other people to have your game going that's incredible it's kind of cool what is your favorite version of that like like what game is your favorite one right now of that that you own currently so i I do own relics and i'm having a real fun time with that it's a very tactile style puzzle game so it's it's a bunch of boxes and blocks and Hmm. your character has to achieve their goal by shifting the blocks around following the particular rules of the puzzle block, right? You can push, but you can't pull. You have to step one level up, one level down. So it it takes a lot of the same kind of gameplay I got from Legend of Zelda and Fire Fire Nice and a couple of others and puts it in this board game form, which is great. Oh, Um, sure. But the one that I played the most before that was actually Tiny Epic Kingdoms, the very first Tiny Epic game that came out. The solar player version of that game is so amazing because of the way the AI works within the game. I I roll a die. I randomly roll a die and a decision is made in the game based on what I rolled. Hmm. And so the AI character doesn't have to follow a strict set of rules. I've played several games that way where I do this, AI does this. I do this, AI does this. And I've learned how to manipulate that, but it doesn't teach me to play the game very well against other players. This one, I have to. I have to strategize differently because that guy could be doing anything randomly. Hmm. of the options that come up and so that's been a really fun one to play solo player that's awesome okay well i th- i th- i think we're out of time um, are you kidding me i could talk about games for two more hours i know i know 
and I kind of want to, but, uh, you know, we have things to do tonight and other whatever. Um, for sure. So, uh, real quick, what game are you most excited to acquire that you don't have yet? Uh, that answer was going to be Shovel Knight for sure, mm-hmm. but I got that thing literally like two days ago. So I think the next one coming up is Red Dragon in 9. Nice. That one's going to be on nine. the mail in about six months. Red Dragon in 9, where you get to go to other inns. Wow. You actually oh. leave Red Dragon in and you go off on a pub crawl. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. Oh, I can't wait for that. That, <laughs> that it's be is so exciting great. on so many levels. Yeah. For me and for you. It's going to be great. <laughs> wow. I mean, for me, I'm just excited to get some more uh, legendary expansions. Um, for sure. You know, that'll be great. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty great. All right. Well, uh, this was good. Um, I love talking about things that maybe people will get something out of, you know, yeah. take, take it home and, uh, go look something up and maybe find something new that you love. You know, I, I think that's great. I don't Sounds... know what is going on with the lights in your room, but I, apparently we're about to blast off. Yeah. I think, uh. <laughs> I think we better let you go before Jeremy explodes. So, <laughs> um, all right, well, we'll catch you next week. It's good seeing you, man. All right. You too. Play some games on it.